This is Alex here with WMD and today we're going to take a look at the WMD Compressor. The WMD Compressor is one of very few Eurorack format compressors available and boasts a wide range of features as well as full CV control. With all of the features of a normal compressor you'd find in a recording studio, guitar pedal, or DAW, the WMD compressor expands on the idea a bit with a few extra goodies. The signal path of the compressor can accept and output levels up to 22 volts peak to peak, slightly higher than standard Eurorack modules. It's even fully DC coupled and can receive any signal from your modular, including control voltage. First, we'll go over all of the knobs, then the switches, and we'll end with the jacks. The input gain knob is for attenuating and adding gain to the incoming signal that you'd like to compress. The input saturation knob reduces the voltage ceiling or headroom of the input circuit, producing a soft to hard saturation as the knob is turned up to 10. The threshold knob dictates when the compression will begin. The lower the threshold, the more compression will be apparent. The ratio knob controls the amount of compression as a function of input level to output level. So for every dB in level increase past the threshold, you get X level increase in the output. 4 to 1 ratio means 4 dB input to get a 1 dB change in the output. Infinity to 1 is a limiter where the input signal is limited to the threshold level. The attack knob controls how fast compression will begin. Whether you're compressing normally or using the sidechain input, the attack knob controls how fast compression will begin or how fast the compressor will duck to the sidechain input. The release knob controls how fast compression will end. If the signal being compressed is very dynamic, changing the release knob will decide whether the compressor follows the dynamics intensely, stays on from peak to peak, or lets up. The attack and release settings are extended a bit than most common compressors. They can react faster than audio rate, as well as much slower than most compressors. They are labeled in time per dB, which means the time it takes for the compressor's output to change 1 dB. When side chaining, it controls how fast the compressor will recover from ducking. The makeup knob brings the post-compression signal back up. When you bring the threshold down, you decrease the final volume the compressor will produce. The makeup gain lets you bring the signal back up to where you want it. The mix knob is a simple wet-dry mix, all the way dry and you only hear the input signal with no compression at all, all the way wet and you only hear the compressed signal. Put the knob at 12 o'clock to hear both signals equally, also referred to as parallel compression. Output saturation reduces the headroom of the compressor circuit. Turning the knob towards 10 produces harder clipping with nice round edges. If makeup gain is significantly high and saturation is off or low, the signal can hard clip at the rails. The output saturation circuit can be used to nicely clip peak transients when the attack is sufficiently low. Now for the switches. The input saturation switch activates the input saturation knob. With this switch turned off, no input saturation will occur. Output saturation switch activates the output saturation knob. The knee switch changes the shape of the compression curve. A hard knee looks like a corner, while a soft knee curves. This is a very subtle RL change to the compression, but can be important when dialing in tones. The detection switch changes how the compressor sees the incoming signal and how it reacts. Peak will be the fastest detection mode as it looks at the peaks of the incoming signal. A dynamic signal with a lot of transients would be followed quickly depending on attack and release settings. Adaptive mode is a smoother mode of detection, but still reacts to very fast transients. It's the most modern sounding compression mode of this module. RMS is very slow and ignores transients for a much more mellow and vintage sounding compression. The AR switch activates and deactivates the attack and release knobs. In auto mode, the knobs won't be active and the compressor will set the values automatically. In manual mode, you are responsible for setting the knobs where you want them for the best sounding compression option for you. The ratio switch is a bit different. In compress mode, the module acts like a normal compressor, reducing gain at the threshold. In expand mode, however, the module reacts in the opposite way, adding gain to the signal for every dB past the threshold. This can be a cool effect and add punch to drums, bass lines, and more. 
And now to explain the jacks of the compressor. Signal in is your input for directing the signal you'd like to compress. Sidechain in is for the audio you'd like your signal to duck to. This is most commonly used with kick drums and bass lines in dance music or in voiceover work in which you need one signal to duck out of the way of another. Get creative with it and find your own way of using it. The envelope out sends an envelope signal based on the attack and release rates. This output will follow the envelope whether you are in manual or automatic attack and release modes. Here I have the envelope out controlling the Hadron filters cutoff frequency. As you can see on the O tool, the gate signal I'm using for the side chain is the green line and the red triangle wave is what my compressor's envelope out signal looks like. Signal out is your compressed signal's output ready to head to another module. The threshold, attack, release, and makeup gain inputs all give you control over their corresponding knobs with CV. If you have two WMD compressors, you can link them together with an eighth inch cable on the back of the module. Flipping each compressor's link switch to stereo will connect the two detectors together for true stereo bus compression. Knobs must be set the same for both channels to truly behave the same, as only the detector information is shared. Let's take a quick look at the options on the back of the module in addition to the stereo link jack. On the bottom left, there is a header with a jumper on it labeled Adaptive Smoothing. This affects how the detector works when in adaptive mode. Extra mode allows a bit extra time to settle after a quick response to a transient. The compressor also has an expand header in anticipation of the not yet released expand module. This header absolutely needs its four jumpers in place to properly function. Right under the stereo link jack, there is a header for detector filtering. Normal mode is quite fast and offers low distortion. If faster detection is desired, move the jumper to the fast side. This setting is so fast, however, that more distortion will occur in the detection signal. 